Good morning and happy new year. It is Monday, January 4th. Welcome to The Street Live. I'm Catherine Ross and I am joined by Jim Kramer. Jim, obviously this is the first trading day of 2021. So how are you going to be spending it? First, happy new year to you, Catherine. I've missed you. I've missed the gang. It's terrific to see you. Sorry about the Cowboys. Uh, that was kind of nasty. Um, you know, I, I'm trading this in a little different way from other people. Uh, I think that this is, uh, there's a change going on right now. Uh, and the change is this. A lot of the stocks that people loved, and I use the, usually use the rubric Okta because that stands for so many stocks, but let's call it Adobe, Salesforce, Workday. They have to rest. Uh, and instead, what people have to be thinking about is a continuation of the financial rally, which one of the things will be like in action alerts because we've got some, but also a, a, a belief that there are, there are down and outers that must be bought. Uh, it, this is a down and outer day. Tomorrow might be too. So I, I mentioned Newell on uh, uh, stop trading uh, on CNBC, and that is a classic name that has been down and out. That's what we're looking for. I prefer people to not buy the oils, but again, I know it is starting to be a broken record, but Chevron and Pioneer are the ones to buy because of the balance sheet. Uh, also, my friend Matt Horwey mentioned the Kinder Morgan, which is a pipeline, KMI, has been coming up to someone, a company that has good dividend. So I'm looking for down and outers, but I don't want to look too hard. I want to find ones that were sold for tax loss that may be good buys now. Jim, tomorrow we have the Georgia runoff. Do you think that's going to have any kind of impact on the markets? Huge, huge. I mean, if uh, the two people who are running on the Democratic Party are very liberal, uh, and more importantly, of course, it would tilt the Senate uh, to uh, the Democrats. So the question is this. There are a lot of people who liked, including Senator Kramer, no relation, uh, from North Dakota, who really liked what the president did uh, with the Georgia uh, electoral people, those Republicans, really liked it and thought it was a terrific, convivial conversation, no pressure. Um, if you think that, then you're probably going to vote Republican. Uh, but if you think that, that the president is off the rails, which some people do, not including me, I'm just a spectator, then maybe the Democrats actually win. The Democrats were really a long shot. Um, but the president has kind of gotten a little bit like um, Cromwell. Uh, I don't know if he knows Cromwell from Cromwell Road, where I was born. Uh, but uh, I do think it, that there is an essence. And the essence right now is that there are a lot of people who love Trump. Um, but there also is democracy. And they're colliding right now. Uh, and it may mean that the Democrats win. Is That is such a long shot. I never would have thought that happened. But the president really hurt these two Republicans. Uh, and again, as an observer uh, who's been around for a long time, the Republicans were hurt uh, by, the, by the president's intransigence. Had he been willing to go, he would have assured that the Senate remained Republican. But no, um, he's been, uh, uh, I think, a thorn in the side of Republicans, and this could backfire. Uh, if you are a Republican, I think you want the president to leave. Jim, in your mad dash this morning, you talked about Airbnb, and you said that you want the stock to go higher. How high do you think that Airbnb can go, and can it keep this momentum going? You know, Catherine, that is just an absolute great question. I, I do believe that uh, Airbnb is going to have a fabulous quarter. Uh, the longer uh, the U.S. fails in bringing out the vaccine, uh, the more Airbnb will be trialed. As it's trialed, I think people recognize that it's a great bargain. Americans love a bargain. Airbnb is a great bargain. The numbers are unbelievable. You list five days, you tend to be uh, get a client, get someone to rent your place. Uh, the, geez, the re-ups are amazing. It, it's a disruptive technology that people truly like. And uh, therefore, could it go to 200? I can come up with a scenario that it's worth that, given that the total addressable market's $1.5 trillion. A lot of the analysts like it. Brian Chesky is a fabulous CEO, uh, one of a kind right now. And that's a pretty admirable position to be in. In stock trading, you mentioned Newell and you said that you like Newell. It's actually one of the few stocks that's up today when we've got the Dow down nearly 287 points. So when do you think that investors should buy this stock? You know, it's got a 4% yield. I think that yield is safe. It's got some really good CEOs. Excellent. Uh, I, I've always liked the names, including the camping gear names, that, you know, good for outdoors. Uh, a lot of people feel that they've been disenfranchised, uh, but, you, you know, as more and more people find their product on, uh, on Amazon, that's terrific. And of course, they're still in Target and Walmart. 
those are great markets for them. So I don't know, Catherine, I think it's a down and outer again, used to be dramatically higher, good products, possibly improving balance sheet, good CO. I kind of like it. I mean, I'm thinking about bullpen maybe for fraction of It's got to do more work, obviously. It's, it kind of, it's in my mind. I, I was hoping I saw it less in the teens. Uh, now at $20, uh, you know, maybe we have to wait. Uh, but the sell-off could be, uh, because it's the ahead of the Georgia runoff, sell-off could be a little significant. And I think that I was surprised that people bought the market at the opening, not knowing whether the Senate's going to go Republican or Democrat. Newell will do well under either uh, regime. And another stock that is seeming to benefit today, despite the sell-off, is Tesla. I mean, it's up 5%. They did fall a little bit short of their 500,000 um, delivery. They came in at 499,550 vehicles delivered. Jim, what kind of when should I enter the stock when it's trading at $742 a share? Or is it time for me to start looking at another company like Neo as an opportunity? Well, I, I don't care for Neo as much as Tesla. I was describing this morning. The Tesla reminds me very much of uh, Intel when it started rolling out the 286, the microprocessors. And people really didn't believe Intel was uh, the 18th largest semiconductor. Now it's, it then it became the first. It's falling on hard times. Uh, I do believe that uh, by that iteration, every time uh, Elon opens a new market, like he is about to do with his uh, factory in Berlin, uh, the stock will go up again. So it's really a question of whether you believe in the idea of iterations. Uh, don't forget, you have Biden in there. So my my thinking is this. Uh, if you don't have any, you can still buy some. Uh, don't buy a lot, but you can certainly buy some because the roadmap is clear. Uh, Elon, every time he talks, is going to be good. And I just think we all have to accept the fact that uh, President Biden will give do anything to make the EV to be the uh, central form of, uh, of, tr of transport. And Tesla certainly that. Over the weekend, we saw Bitcoin hit 30,000, then 34,000. And then on Monday morning, we kind of saw it come back down a little bit. So, Jim, what is this to be expected to see this kind of sell off after such a massive I, I, rally? I bought, I bought Bitcoin after Pomp. I mean, I made it pretty clear. A lot of people didn't believe me. I bought Bitcoin after I did Pomp's show. And repeatedly, I've uh, tweeted that where I said that I was going to buy it. I bought it, as a, frankly, as an asset, not as a trade. Uh, but if you look at the timestamp of when I bought it, then you know that I have more than a double. So you know that what my uh, uh, belief is what you do is that you take out your cost basis. And um, I've taken out almost my entire cost basis uh, so I can let the rest run. And that, that's certainly my idea. Um, I'm not doing anything that I wouldn't do with a stock, which is to take as much cost, you know, take my cost basis out on a double. What's worrying me, Catherine, is that, the run came when I was away. I mean, you know, it, it, can't, it went from being a currency to being a speculative object. I didn't regard it. When I went over with Pomp, I didn't regard it as speculative. Uh, if it's speculative, I have no reason to be able to keep running around with it. Uh, the good news is, of course, is now that I've uh, completely, you know, taken out almost my entire cost basis, I, I'm going to say, hold on. Uh, and if it ever got back to 14, um, I'm going to buy more. Even 18 on my phone. Jim, you had a really interesting real money piece this morning that focused on the vaccine rollout. And, and I think that there's a lot of frustration right now with how we're doing this vaccine rollout. But you have a solution. You actually say that um, we should be taking states and the private sector out of this rollout. Can you explain what yeah, you mean I by mean, that? It, look, that? Look, I mean, I think, first of all, there's tremendous fear of, uh, of President Trump. Uh, what's he going to do? Okay, I'll just tell a quick story. I criticized the dean of Harvard before I graduated. I figured, what could he do? Well, they withhold my diploma, withheld it for months because I spoke up. I'm very proud that I spoke up. I created a, a ripple that became a wave that changed a major way that Harvard worked. And um, I took my diploma in hand. I am now willing to risk my diploma as a citizen to challenge the notion that this is any way to do a rollout. I have been a big backer of warp speed, but I said November 20th that the rollout would be chaotic. That was the wrong word, it's ridiculous. And uh, I have solutions. My solutions are right in real money. They're better than what's being done. The private sector shouldn't be involved because people don't trust the private sector in this country. Uh, and, and because uh, the 
private sector is uh, not uniform. You need the military to do it. It needs to be done at every high school in the country because there are high schools everywhere. Uh, it needs to be like the Sabin uh, polio vaccine was administered. Now, what's strange is we actually have an analog, which is the Sabin portfolio uh, uh, of how to do it. You roll it out um, one week, another week, another week, another week until everyone's inoculated. Uh, by that point, we should have J&J. Um, it's, you can do it however you want once the federal government decides, but federal government is completely dysfunctional. I mean, they're even dysfunctional, Catherine, on the, uh, on, on, on the therapeutic, the one that the president got. If you get uh, COVID in the first couple of days, the Regeneron drug works. We saw that with the president. The FDA approved it. It's been bottled up by the NIH and no one's you know, getting it. Uh, again, that's just idiocy. Why is the NIH overruling the FDA? It, it shouldn't do that. So I think that people's fear of Trump has kept people from being as uh, vocal as I am. And again, I expect retaliation. I expected, I didn't expect retaliation at Harvard. I didn't think my diploma would be withheld. I didn't believe that I would be waved off the stage. I didn't believe that there would be no handshake. I didn't believe in front of thousands of people that I would be kicked out of Harvard, uh, which was suboptimal given that I was magna cum laude. Uh, but you know, it got resolved. It's highly embarrassing, took the pain, made the change, ready to do it again. And I think that anybody who feels that the rollout's good is a fool. Uh, and maybe they are fools because they they voted for Trump. That's silly. You, you can certainly vote for Trump and not believe that the rollout's any good. So, uh, yeah, I do propose a way to, look, um, to improve the rollout in real money. I urge people to read it. And of course, you can read that piece over on realmoney.com. Jim, before I let you go, I've got one last question, and that's about Jack Ma, because there have been a slew of articles this morning. Yeah, you see him? Yeah, where he is. He hasn't made a public appearance in a while, and it has actually caught the attention of Reddit's Wall Street bets. So, Jim, despite the fact that Ma is not actively involved with Alibaba at this stage, for a U.S. investor, are these articles a little bit concerning? Well, you know, it's a... Uh, a, a repressive totalitarian communist regime. I have said multiple times that President Trump is right about uh, taking a hard line on the Chinese. I thought he did a very good job on that. Now, listen, you, uh, the Trumpists out there, I'm a Trumpist. Um, I think that more than you, the Trumpists, I felt that his policy on China was very strong. I articulated that he should do this in 2008. Uh, whether he got it from me, I don't know. Maybe he did. Uh, but uh, this shows you the fact that Ma hasn't surfaced shows you it's a reminder that the Chinese government uh, executes white collar criminals all the time. It's not what I think they should do. Uh, I think that uh, the Chinese and any belief that their system is, is anything other than what Mao had. It, we have a return to Mao, except for the country's much more powerful. Mao killed people routinely. Um, so I don't know. Maybe Ma's in trouble over there. Now that said, let me make this very clear. The people of China are amazing. I love them. They have done such a great job trying to create wealth for the country. It's an amazing country and they've got such great people and they should let the people rule. I bet you the people would do even better than President Xi. And with that, thank you for joining us today and a happy 2021. Jim and I are now heading over to our Action Alerts Plus members only daily rundown show. Now this show, Jim, I'm really, I'm really want to get down to what's going on with the Dow. I'm looking at it right now. It's down 360 points. So sure, as of 10.51 a.m. So let's head on over there. I'm Catherine Ross let's and I'll see there. you tomorrow.